Good morning. I'd like to take a moment just to speak about our Sunday worship from next Sunday onwards. That's from the 5th of July. We heard this last week that the government is now going to allow churches to open for Sunday worship from the 5th of July under certain conditions. That means then that we will be allowed to gather next week and I'm proposing that throughout the Sundays in July we have one single benefice service per Sunday at one of our churches. So if it's possible, next Sunday at half past ten there will be a parish Eucharist at St Andrews with them on the hill. Now it will be slightly different. For a start, uh, we're not permitted to sing at this time, so it will be a said service. It will also be uh, slightly more concise, a little bit shorter, in order to allow us to, to gather and worship safely, but not to be in a building together in close proximity for longer than we need to be. And when we gather, we will have to sit at appropriate distances from one another, and the distribution of Holy Communion, should it be permitted, we don't know yet, but should it be permitted, will likely be in one kind. And again, it will be administered in such a way as to reduce the risk to all. We're also being told that after the service has ended, that we're not encouraged to remain in the building to share in fellowship with each other. Rather, if the weather is nice, then we'll be able to, uh, to gather outside, again at safe and appropriate distances, uh, in order to be able to share in fellowship, uh, catch up with one another, share concerns, all that sort of thing, all those good things that we would ordinarily do. So things will be a little different. So hopefully next Sunday, half past ten, St Andrew's with them on the hill, then the Sunday after that I anticipate we'll be here at Ednam again if that is possible. Uh, and then I'd encourage you to check uh, the pew sheet, uh, the Regional House Facebook page and keep an eye on the WhatsApp group if you're a member or a part of that to see what will happen afterwards. But my proposal is that we will have a single benefit service per Sunday during the month of July. In addition to that, our online provision will also continue. So we will continue to record, to live stream and upload services that you'll be able to access through the internet. So the, the provision on a Sunday and the recorded and live streamed and uploaded provision will also continue side by side in tandem until such time as it is uh, safe and appropriate for us to meet together uh, more in the way that we used to. So I hope uh, that's as clear as I can be at this time. We're still waiting for the particulars to come from the Church of England of what will be required from us and of us in order to be able to open our churches for Sunday worship and to be able to worship safely. So please do keep an eye on your email inbox. Keep an eye also, as I say, on the Regional House Facebook site and website and also on the WhatsApp group. And hopefully, uh, when we know exactly what will be happening, we can share and disseminate that information uh, effectively. But the other thing to remember is that if you have received a letter from the government saying that you need to continue to shield until the beginning of August, then I would advise that you don't come to the Sunday services as and when they happen until after that time. Obviously, it's up to you with regard to what you do in accordance with that advice, but that would be uh, my suggestion to you. But I'll leave that uh, for you to decide. So thanks for your attention and do enjoy our Sunday worship. You are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, welcome once more to the Church of St. Michael and all angels here at Ednam as we celebrate the Apostles Peter 
and Paul. And we're also uh, blessed this morning as we're joined by our own apostle, Bishop Norman uh, will be with us uh, for the sermon. He'll be coming live from his very nice garden uh, at St Albans, just opposite the cathedral. So we look forward to hearing from him later. Friends, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you in their death as in their life, grant that your church, inspired by their teaching and example, may be made one by your Spirit and ever stand firm upon the one foundation, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. The angel who talked with me came again and woke me, like a man who is awakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? I said, I see and behold a lampstand, all of gold, with a bowl on top of it, and seven lamps on it, with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on the top of it. And there are two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on its left. And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. These seven are the eyes of the Lord which range through the whole earth. Then I said to him, what are these two olive trees on the right and on the left of the lampstand? And a second time I answered and said to him, What are these two branches of the olive trees which are beside the golden pipes from which the golden oil is poured out? And he said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that stands forever. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion which cannot be moved but stands fast forever. As the hills stand about Jerusalem, so the Lord stands round about his people from this time forth forevermore. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that stands forever. The scepter of wickedness shall not hold sway, 
over the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous turn their hands to evil. Those who trust in the Lord are like, like Mount Zion that stands for ever. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. Those who turn aside to crooked ways the Lord shall take away with the evildoers, but let there be peace upon Israel. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that stands for ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About that time Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, and when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Now when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and the light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands, and the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know what was being done by the angel was real, but thought that he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all the Jewish and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And now I'm delighted to welcome our Bishop, Bishop Norman, to be our guest preacher here this morning. From St. Matthew's Gospel, Peter spoke up, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember when I was about 16 reading a slim paperback which had a tremendous impact upon me. It was by a now little known Christian apologist and theologian called William Barclay and it was called Crucified and Crowned. I remember reading it and coming to this passage where William Barclay is trying to explain about faith and he says it's rather like going to a cliff edge and looking down towards the sea and actually letting go and believing that 
by letting go, we are saved by the arms of the living Saviour, of Jesus himself. And what he goes on to say is that it's not just that we are saved by the loving arms of Jesus, but by experiencing that, that sense of giving our lives to Jesus, that, that that life is changed, that our future will be different because of that experience, the beginnings of that relationship. We will have a new future. That really did have a great effect upon me. And although it's classical, evangelical understanding of coming to faith, it's none the worse for that. Well, today we are celebrating and remembering the two pillars of the church, St. Peter and St. Paul, and giants of the ability to communicate the good news that still rings through the centuries and their, their words and their experience of Jesus is as vibrant and as alive and as true now as ever it was. It really is fascinating that we've got their two personalities, very, very different. We've got the uh, uneducated fisherman and we've got the intellectual Pharisee, both who are chosen by Jesus to communicate the good news that he brought to earth. Uh, when he was, was born and lived out his life largely around the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And both of those men, at some point, had to, in a sense, hurl themselves over the cliff into the arms of Jesus. And it is, of course, Peter who has the, the courage to speak up and say, yes, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. And of course Jesus responds by saying, well, you can't have understood that or realized that through earthly means. You can only know that because it's been told you by my Father in heaven. Interesting that that crucial moment in faith history comes from the lips of this rural fisherman in Galilee. The church at this time of year, if possible, tries to ordain its deacons and its priests at what we call Petertide, around the, the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. And of course, those who come to be ordained into the ministerial priesthood have offered their lives to Christ. But it's also a time for us as Christians to ask those same questions of ourselves. Have we given ourselves over this last year to the Lord in a way that we've been able to experience a fresh and a new life in all its abundance? I have to hear some words from William Barclay. He actually says, into life there enters a new power, a power which gives us the future. So on this feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, as we give thanks for the life, the witness, the courage, the energy of Peter and Paul, and for all Christians who have followed in the way of faith, to pray for those to be ordained at this time and those preparing to be ordained at Michaelmas, and also to offer ourselves afresh to Christ and to say deep, deep in our hearts, Yes, Lord, you are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. And so may the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy, St. Peter and St. Paul and all the saints pray for you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. to stand and declare our faith as we join together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Encouraged by our fellowship with Saints Peter and Paul and all the saints, let us make our prayers now to the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. Father, your Son called ordinary people to leave the past behind them and to follow him as his disciples in the way of the cross. Look with mercy upon those whom he has called today, who he has marked with the cross and made his disciples within the church. And we pray especially for our bishops, for Christopher, David, Nicholas, and Norman. Praying also for clergy of this benefice uh, and asking prayers especially for Father Peter and for Pauline. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your son told his disciples not to be afraid and at Easter he breathed on them his gift of peace. Look, we pray with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out, and give it that peace for which it longs. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your Son formed around him a company who were no longer servants but friends, and he called all those who obeyed him his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families, our friends, and our parish communities within this benefice and also for all of those who are friends and patrons of the regional house. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your Son sent out his disciples to preach and to heal the sick. Look with mercy upon those who have asked our prayers, praying that they would know Christ's comforting presence and his healing touch. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your Son promised to those who followed him that one day they would sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel and that they would share in the banquet of the kingdom. According to your promises, look with mercy upon the faithful departed, upon any we know who have died recently, those whose anniversaries occur around this time, and our own departed family members, friends and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. In a moment of quiet, we offer our own particular prayers, needs, intentions and thanksgivings to God. Father, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. So join us together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that with Saints Peter and Paul, we may be made a holy temple acceptable unto you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Father, accept all that we bring before you this day. Guide us with your love and feed us at your table as you nourish the faith of the Church by the preaching of your apostles, Peter and Paul. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good that we should give you thanks and praise and glory, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For after his resurrection, he sent out his apostles and evangelists to preach the gospel to all nations and to lead us in the way of truth. He himself, the chief cornerstone, he founded the church upon the apostles, firmly to stand forever as a sign of your holiness upon earth and as a living witness to all of the way that leads to heaven. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lift our voices to join in their unending hymn of praise as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace, together with Sally Harris, Christine Lodge, Clarissa Hawes, Isabel Wright, Kathleen Burns, Ellen Cartwright, Hannah Simpson, Wendy Bug, Dorothy Wiesel, Nicola Duncan, Scylla Hibbins, Kath Hawes, Peggy Pease, Margaret Morris, Father John Widows, Alison Atter, Jane Fitzgerald, the Reverend Richard Shaw, Jimmy Walters, Tina Nichols, Dorothy Court, Lewis Flood, and amongst the departed, for David Blackburn, Ron Lee, Joe Grimmer, 
Peter Pooley, priest, and all who look to you for comfort and strength. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Michael, St. Andrew, Saints Peter and Paul and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Keep watch over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the Church of God which he obtained with the blood of his own Son. Let us pray. 
Gracious Father, renew within us the fountain of life as we receive the body and blood of your Son in celebration of the Apostles Peter and Paul. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.